Welcome back to the Clifton Cameras Week in Review. Uh, it's just ourselves this week, myself here, yeah. and my esteemed colleague, Ben Wright. <laughs> uh, this week we're going to talk about, well, there's an event I'd like to let you know about, then we're going to discuss the new Nikon P1000. Nice. We're going to talk about whether Nat Geo selling fine art prints is really considered fine art. There's a, well, a tragic news story about three, three yes. vloggers slash content creators that, that lost their lives. Um, and then we've got uh, we've got some promotions for you. Yep. So, let's get started. Um, I just want to let everybody know that we've got a food workshop coming up. Uh, not making food, but photographing food uh, on August 11th uh, on Saturday in our Dursley location. We have a uh, professional food photographer coming in, Esther Ling. She's a Lumix ambassador and a well-known uh, and well-regarded international uh, photographer and and well, food photographer, Very weddings, good. portraiture. So stuff. yeah, she's got some uh, some great photos. So if you want to know how to improve your food photography, be that for the Instagram or whether or not you're a small business owner, uh, perhaps you want to take food from you know your cafe, <laughs> or if it's just for home stuff. Yeah. So many applications for food <laughs> yeah, photography. Yeah. yeah, it's endless. It really it is. is. Um, so yeah, join us on that. Tickets are twenty five pounds, and included in the price of the ticket, uh, we're throwing in a thirty two gigabyte uh, memory card. So I mean, that is worth twenty five pounds on its own. So even if you come, you hate it, you don't like any of the food, maybe you don't even like to eat, uh, you, you get to hang out with us for two and a half hours, and you walk away with a uh, a thirty two gigabyte SD card. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hopefully I promoted that well. What do you think, guys? Um, okay, moving on. Yes. Let's get to the meat of this uh, of this video. Mm -hmm. The Nikon P1000. Awesome. What is it? Well, the P900 was an incredibly good camera. It had a range of 24 mil to 2000 mil. That's nuts. Uh, I seem to remember them just flying off, literally flying off the shelves. Literally just poof, yeah, <laughs> straight away. Spread wings. As soon as we got them in, they were going straight out. Uh, the new one apparently has a focal range of 24 to 3,000 millimeters. They upped their game by a yeah. third. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. What do you so. do with that? Who buys these? <laughs> there are some interesting videos on YouTube of people on beaches. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, obviously for sports and wildlife, this could be, you know... Bird watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. That. <laughs> you can get Not some that kind video. of bird. <laughs> I was going to say you can get some good moon shots as well, but that could be, <laughs> <laughs> it can be uh, you know, applied to something else as well. But they, uh, there is actually genuinely some uh, footage they've uh, captured. Uh, does 4K and everything as well. And the, the, the focal range of it is absolutely ridiculous. They took some uh, footage of the moon and it is actually, it is actually moon, pretty intense. Moon footage, don't they the call moon, it? moon, yes. It's a moon, they call it moonscapes, I've seen in Nikon's uh, thing. So, right. not landscapes anymore, moonscapes. Indeed. Epic. So, but you've also got, uh, what's it? You can you can double the focal length as well, can't you? You can digitally. I, I, I want to see how that works. Yeah, the, dy this. the dynamic fine zooms. You can get up to six thousand millimeters on it. What? How how good that will be? I don't know. That's crazy. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty pretty crazily impressive camera. We should hopefully be getting one sort of in the next couple of months where we yeah. better put a video together for them. Do our best to demonstrate the, the capabilities of this camera. Um, yeah. Perhaps like a Where's Waldo type <laughs> situation. I think that would work quite well actually. I think it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous amount that you can get in on this. So on it the, is. It's just a fun thing, isn't it? But mm -hmm. I mean, it's got some pretty serious specs as well, right? Yeah, well, I've, I've already seen some of the photography from it as well and it actually, it holds up. It's, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. Yeah. So I mean, you get up to six thousand four hundred in the ISO, which is well. Then again, how much need, how much do you need really? Yes, yeah, it's entirely respectable. And if you're taking moonscapes, I imagine you're going <laughs> you're going you're going long exposure anyway. So yeah, yeah, that sounds like a pretty cool thing, right? So yeah, yeah. Four K video. What's that? Yeah, you, you got go. their stereo audio recording. Yeah, you can take photos in RAW. It's got a bunch of creative modes. There you go. RAW so capability. Bird, bird watching. It does. Bird actually, watching. Yeah, not not in quotations. I did see that for. Uh, you know, quick moving nature, mm. birds basically, I guess. Do it catches up pretty well? Or? Well, apparently, yeah. I think it shoots seven frames per second, doesn't it? Okay. So, you know, you're shooting a... That's decent. Yeah, I think the AF's maybe probably pretty decent on it as well. So you've got raw seven frames per second, 
yeah, uh, diff, uh, creative modes. There's also one centimeter, uh, centimeter macro yeah. mode as well. So I'm guessing that's good for the uh, close up stuff. Filter effects, time lapse effect, which is always nice. Yeah, I do like a nice time lapse myself. Mm -hmm. I have to mm -hmm. say. What's it going to set you back? Nine nine nine. Is that good? I don't know. I'd, I'd say that was pretty good for what it is. For something that comes with a. 3000 mil lens on the end of it. Yeah, yeah it's got a variable aperture of uh, 2.8 to f8. So that's all right. That's yeah, not yeah. bad. For I mean, 6000 millimeter. Yeah, for a 6000 <laughs> millimeter <laughs> lens, you get f8. It's entirely <laughs> respectable. I and mean, then f2.8 makes it a good, that's a good camera for, you know, for travel or family photos or whatever. It's yeah, a bridge yeah. camera, isn't it? So it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a do it all kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's great. It's got, it also got, uh, it's uh, got dual detect optical VR, which yeah. provides five stops of uh, camera shake compensation as well. So obviously when you're going to be at that, uh, yeah. the telephoto uh, side of the range, that's, that's yeah. going to come in very handy. I imagine at that length, you're picking up some atmospheric distortion as well, but we yeah. have to wait and see. But uh, with, combined with a tripod, I think you can get some pretty pretty good yeah. results with this thing. I think I'm, pretty awesome. I'm very curious to see how well, you know, what the actual the utility of the thing is. I really want to know who these you know these people are who are out there. I mean, this thing went up and we had pre-orders immediately. Yeah. So yeah, I want to know absolutely. who these you know who are the who are the bridge who's uh, who out there is shooting with bridge <laughs> cameras that are hyped on bridge cameras waiting for these things to be released. You know what I mean? Yeah. This Maybe. must be some you know. Yeah. The, the last one sold very well. I do remember it was just as soon as we got stock in, it was just yeah. it was going out straight away. So it's certainly yeah. making me reconsider bridge cameras as a as a viable alternative to a, you know, a DSLR or a CSC if you're just looking for something simple to, yep. you know, to travel with. Lightweight, yeah. I think it's, it's very lightweight, this, this one, I can't remember what the, what the weight of the thing was. But, uh, I remember the P900, I had a go with one myself, it was pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, like you said, it was very lightweight, very easy to take around with you. And yeah, a yeah. lot of options you've got with it. Fair enough, well I look forward to having that in my hands <laughs> and doing some photography. Hmm. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> um, cool. Let's talk about this National Geographic thing. Yes, I think um, you're more informed on this one than I. On this one. You brought it to my attention. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then did no research. <laughs> you just said basically that the, the photos that get sold in this National Geographic Fine Art Gallery, which mm. is a, if you just type that into Google, it'll come up for you. Um, the, the photographer only gets 5% of the total sale price. Yeah. Which seems absurd. Yeah. Um, especially given that when I actually went through this, uh, this article, that some of the prints, the prints usually start out, apparently they've got a, a strange scaled uh, way of doing things. So the images that go up in the National Geographic Fine Art Gallery, right. um, pretty impressive photos, yeah. really. I mean, there's some great looking photos on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, they do them in editions of 200, which is apparently quite large for uh, an edition of fine art photos. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fine art photographer myself. Oh, 200 of each. 200 of each, right. yeah. Like, which, I mean, that does seem like quite a lot, you know, mm -hmm. for uh, for any sort of, you know, fine art, be it photography or anything else that you create a print of. I mean, uh, you yeah. know, an edition of 50 seems quite large with some things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so not only is there an edition of 200, but it has a scaled uh, sort of pricing uh, situation. So they start out at, I think, 60, 70 centimeters for $1,800. Right. And then the more they sell and the larger they are, the, the more the price increase. So the more of that 200, the more there are out there of that 200 uh, prints, right. the more expensive they get towards, you know, 150, 180, 190, that kind of thing. Right, okay. But yeah, the, yeah. the base price starts out at $1,800. So 5% of $1,800 is what how much is that is it 90? 90 90 bucks yeah. which is not a great deal From so 1800 yeah um seems weird when artists usually they usually get something like 40 50 percent of the you know of the price of the, of the art that's sold yeah, in the gallery right. if not more i'm not you know, so <laughs> yeah which which yeah makes sense not five yeah 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 so yeah it's uh it's interesting so national geographic explained this by saying that um NGFA, National Geographic Fine Art Gallery, follows a pricing matrix which is arranged by size and category. There's a pre-release price that's held for 30 days. After 30 days, the price increases. As the images sell, the price increases based on the sales rate. So as the National Geographic Fine, Fine Art 
uh, National Geographic Fine Art pays the National Geographic Creative Agency, which I assume is the people that source photographers. This article comes from a photographer who was petitioned by National Geographic for an image to be displayed in their gallery and thus sold. Um, the, the National Geographic Creative Agency, who I assume recruits the photographers and, and, and picks the work that they want to sell, uh, they get a 10% royalty on these sales, so basically $180 you know, from your, your base price of 1800 bucks, and they split that 50% with the photographer. So the photographer gets 50% of the 10% that the creative agency gets, and the rest of that money goes yeah. to National Geographic Fine Art, which seems... 90%. That seems ludicrous. Right. I don't know what they're doing, what their overheads are, but that's mm. insane. <laughs> um, you know, wow. and it, it, what makes it even more of a farce, I think. So, yeah, I think, you know, what this is really about is whether or not this National Geographic Fine Art thing, is it real? Is it a legit fine art gallery or is it just some, you know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> we all like National Geographic, don't we? We don't like yeah, to yeah. think that they're taking advantage of photographers no, that, by that, any that means. That does seem ludicrous. But it does seem silly. Um, yeah. And... For each of these prints, uh, generally, you know, generally the the artist and the photographer is involved in the printmaking in some way. They get to sign off on it. Right. Um, in this one, they use an auto pen machine, which is a machine that I, I didn't realize existed, but I always had a sneaking suspicion. You know, when you get those letters in the post from people high up at corporate, you yeah, know, yeah. places where you may have purchased a product and it appears like somebody's actually signed off on it. CEO, right. whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mister something something. Uh, turns out there's this machine out there where you can submit a digital signature it and replicates it, it replicates it, but with a pen, <laughs> it just holds the pen and does it. Wow! And so they replicate, you know, the, the you know the, the photographer's signature on these things, and they're selling these prints for thousands and thousands of dollars. Can you really call that a fine art photo print? You paid right. five thousand dollars for it. It's one of yeah. two hundred, and the the signature is even from the artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That alone seems like quite a significant investment, that machine. Right? That's probably why they need all that money. <laughs> yeah, to pay, pay, for for this, pay for their signature this machine. Forging machine. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. So make your you know, make your own mind up on this one. I think it's a I think it's a racket. And I think it was just a, a beware type of situation. Uh, not like I said before, we all love National Geo. Yeah, I mean they they have some great you know, photographers on their on their payroll and they support some amazing projects. But this National Geographic Fine Art Gallery, yes, yeah, not really a fine art gallery in my opinion. Uh, and 100%. yeah, be warned that you know if you're approached by National Geographic Fine Art, I mean they'll tell you this is how it works. It's kind of up to you to you know either sign on the dotted line or not. It's nice to have that income, but think about it in the sense that are you contributing by signing on to you know a program like this the the devaluation of, of photography and other photographic works. Yeah, yeah. If people can get such astounding images for for such a low, well, I mean, if you'll sell them for such a low price, you know, you're you're sort of damaging yours and and, uh, and your colleagues' industry, yeah. aren't you? So, anyways, uh, yeah. So buyer beware, photographer also beware, everybody beware. <laughs> yeah. Trust no one. Trust no one. Um, cool. So up next. Tragedy. Yes. Three well, Canadian YouTube vloggers have yeah. died. Darn so, it. Yeah, yeah. All at once. Yeah, it's pretty hard. There's a, there's a, a lot of you might already be aware of these guys. Uh, High on Life, is that what it's called? High on Life. Yes. 560,000 subscribers on YouTube, 1.1 million on Instagram. Not an insignificant number. Absolutely. I bet it's basically a group of, is it all in, because this was in uh, sir, Canada, isn't it? Was yeah. It Canada? The, yeah, I think it, Shannon Falls. Um, is uh, was it is it is it in Canadian thing? Yeah, British Columbia. British Columbia, uh, pretty spectacular waterfall. I don't know if all the people there's a group of people that are a part of this high on life thing, aren't there? So do they travel the world? Yeah, I, I think it's basically a bunch of twenty somethings that have decided to turn uh, vlogging, photography, and, and content creation into a yeah. into a business, basically. Yeah, basically living the dream. Yeah, they really? just travel around, and make videos. Which is something you can do now. It's a that's a viable career path. I think if you can find a way to make that work, then who hats off to you? Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to do that? Um, unfortunately, uh, not everyone feels that no. <laughs> that way. What? Like people were pretty upset about this. Well, there was just some pretty harsh comment. I mean, it is worth mentioning that I, I think some people were kind of annoyed the fact that quite a lot of the, the would you call them stunts? Stunts. I don't know. 
I don't know if some of them were stunts, but I think they they did. A, I, when looking through the back catalog of, of videos and stuff that they had, it seems more like travel blogging to me. But they just put themselves in some precarious situations to get some really amazing shots. Well, I think there were some people saying, yeah, they did blatantly sort of bypass guidelines, yeah. and you know there was a lot of safety stuff, and they kind of yeah, yeah. kind of just went straight past. And, so some of these negative comments, I can maybe see where they were coming from. Yeah, you know, it's like okay, well, you shouldn't have been doing that in the first place. You've got to respect nature. There you go. Totally. But I mean, there's some comments like they had it coming, good riddance. <laughs> and you know, I read social media influencers and I just start to laugh. All this sort yeah. of karma's a don't respect nature. Well, well, actually, I kind of agree with that one. Actually, don't respect nature, and this is what you get in return. Maybe. Yeah, you know, I can see that. There's some truth to that, but I think a lot of it is just people being bitter that these guys figured out how to live their lives in in board shorts and bikinis and, that, and make a living doing that it. That seems to be the overall thing, doesn't it? It's, yeah. more, it's not, you know, I mean, essentially three people died at yeah. the end of the day, and the sort of like the, apparently because they're YouTube influencers. Yeah. That's fine. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they deserved to die. Because those people are evil now. I think mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have got a chip on their shoulder for people who make who make content for social media and yeah. Instagram and stuff. Especially people who have found a way to turn it into a living. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Rather than doing it themselves, it seems much easier to look at somebody else and oh, you've got everything, and yeah. you know, therefore I'm going to put you down. And you're just, you're just bitter, man. You're just jealous. That's all <laughs> it is. Yeah, really. Like, you know, I think these guys, when you look at their their stuff as well, some pretty spectacular imagery. I think they were just a bunch of well-meaning twenty-something-year-old people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just trying to figure it out. Yeah. They clearly saw how things went for their parents and their parents before you know them, grandparents, and were like, well. I don't have to do that. I've got yeah. other options. Absolutely. So, they found a way to make it work and they did. Like, yeah. Uh, hats off to them, I say. I think the, the thing is just try to be safe. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the overriding, the, the, the overall, the comments were pretty much respectful, weren't they? Yeah. Like, they were just those odd ones. There's, I mean, you see, it on, you see it on, I think it was more bringing up uh, social media as a whole, isn't it? And there's always those trolls. There's always yeah. those, those people who just, just, putting out intense negativity really and it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know there's just no need for it really it's a common thing that's ha this seems to be happening more frequently though like I think these guys were doing this stuff I don't know about I don't know what the right reason would be for this kind of thing do you know what I mean like they right. did trespass on some uh, on some important yeah wildlife reserves uh, things that were supposed to be uh, preserved so right. there, there's record of them being fined for walking across I can't remember what the geysers are Yellowstone. yes well what, uh, Yellowstone Grand Prismatic Spring yeah so pretty spectacular area of natural beauty that we're trying to you know to protect and hold on to I'm not really you know I think they they sort of they were fined for for just walking you know walking across it and disregarding that yeah I mean it's you know it is Maybe they took a really uh, esoteric view on it and were like, we're humans, we live on the planet, we can do whatever we want, yeah, you know, we're yeah. not going to abide by what, you know, other people's rules, similar to the way they decided to live their lives. They just figured we're not going to, we're not going to yeah. fit in, we're going to do things differently. Not going to okay, the whatever. social norm. But you're starting to see a lot more of these people, the uh, people like Instagram, I don't know what you would call them, like Instagram daredevils. You know these guys that go to the, like the top of... 30 story skyscrapers and we'll yeah. do backflips on the very yeah, edge of the yeah, building. That's ridiculous. Well. <laughs> now, these kids are turning up left and right at the bottom of these buildings, a, a bag of broken bones. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that been over the last couple of years, hasn't there? Tons. I think there was a, a guy, he didn't even have a, a grand following, but he was found at the bottom of a six story building in New York a few days ago, yeah. like six days ago or something. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. No, that's just that's just stupidity. You <laughs> yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I mean, if you you know if you want to, but you know that's that's just being that's just being silly. I don't think these I don't think these guys were, were like that. No, I think they're pretty. They seem like pretty positive people. Yeah. So, yeah. so don't be negative, people. Don't be negative. So just be. Let's be one. Let's be one. Yeah. <laughs> one love, plur, all the rest of it. So okay, sad stuff there. Tragic. Um, but. If you feel like going to check out their uh, check out their content, you can do so. Yep. Um, cool. Promotions. Promotions. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, we just got two this week, so we've got a two hundred and seventy-five pound trading bonus on the Nikon D eight fifty. 
Oh, sweet. Uh, when you part exchange any uh, working interchangeable lens camera. Wouldn't uh, mind. Towards it. Any working interchangeable lens camera? Yes. D850, absolutely so. phenomenal camera. I think both of us have said we would absolutely love to have that camera. Yeah, so, definitely. So, yeah. Um, the other one is for Panasonic. We've got up to £300 cash back on selected Panasonic cameras and camcorders. Also an excellent deal there. Absolutely. And you can find the uh, links down in the description if you want to go and check those out on the website. That would be great. Good stuff. That's it. Wrap it up. <laughs> be done. Yeah, so I think that's us done for this week. We'll be back next week. Maybe Andy will be with us. Maybe he will. Maybe but, he will. Uh, if you like this, make sure that you do like. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you guys. If you are subscribed, share. Spread the word for Clifton Cameras. Feedback is important. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. Thank you. Bye. Cool. That was good. That was a good wrap up that. That was okay. I like that. Bye.